ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू जगन्नाथ राव नायडू लिव्ड ऑपोजिट नारायण शर्मा हाउस शी वुड रिकलेक्ट इज फर्स्ट एनकाउंटर विथ बाबा इन द फॉलोइंग मैन दिस इज फ्रॉम जगन्नाथ राव नायडू नरेशन वन इवनिंग हैड ए ग्लिम्स ऑफ ए बॉय who was about 16 years old emerging from the residence of my superior officer narayan sharma and getting into a car there was a sizable crowd of snipers it only whetted our desire to know the personage who had such powerful charisma enough to draw so many people to him when he left we asked narayan sharma about him sharma told me about him He also said that his followers called him Sai Baba, and that he was staying at Jangam Subbaradi Chowdhury Convention Hall in Al Sur, Bangalore, and would be staying there for a couple of days. But well, my sister-in-law Nagaratna Ma had severe asthma and was always sick. I thought it would be prudent to ask Baba to cure her. Accordingly, I informed my brother-in-law. V Narsimha Rao Naidu my wife suggested that my brother-in-law and I go to the chowdhury and invite baba to come to our house and then petition him for the desired cure by the time we reached the place bhajans were over and baba was resting hence we stayed overnight in the chowdhury in the morning we waited for baba to come to the hall when baba arrived devotees were taking turns paying their respects to him we found an opportunity to invite baba to our house for lunch he took our address and readily agreed to come at noon we returned home immediately to tell others to be ready to receive him and requested other members of the family to join us at noon narayan sharma ushered baba into our house at 1 or 2 in the afternoon with shrinivas reddy baba's host at the earlier house and some other devotees lunch had been arranged and all of us sat down to eat my mother hurriedly served one dish after another but forgot to serve a certain dish what swami said you did not bring one of the dishes My mother was a little flustered. She checked the food items, and yes, one dish was indeed missing. The dish was also brought and served. Though the food was prepared for a limited number, it was sufficient for all the guests. After lunch, Baba rested some time. After which, we told Baba about my sister-in-law's asthma. He said, "Let us see." Before he left, Narsimha Naidu invited Baba. to visit his house an invitation to which baba readily agreed see how swami blessed almost everybody yes and then what happened was the following day he visited narsimha rao naidu house on the fourth main road chamaraj pet narsimha rao naidu requested that baba stay for the next day and suggested holding bhajans that evening baba agreed to the proposal During the bhajans, Baba sang several songs, followed in chorus by others. My wife played the harmonium. Here again, we find an opportunity to tell him about my sister-in-law's health. Baba's response was the same. Let us see. After bhajans, he retired for the night. The following day, before he left, he gave some vibhuti to my sister-in-law to apply some on her head and to swallow the rest. There was some improvement in her health. He stayed there for two or three days and returned to Puttaparthi. Before going, he assured us that he would come again. A month later, Baba visited our house again at our invitation. This time, along with Karanam Subbamma, after partaking of some food in our house, he went to stay with Nasubrao Naidu for about ten days. Swami directed him to hold bhajans daily. We had sessions from six thirty to nine, wherein Swami would also sing. Subsequently, 
there is Akhanda Bhajan for 24 hours, starting on Saturday evening and ending on Sunday night. Generally, Swami's visits lasted a week or 10 days. A day before his departure, he would again hold an Akhanda Bhajan session from evening to the next morning. Daily Bhajans attracted neighbors and friends. It was during that time that Kamala Bai, wife of V.S. Tiruvenkata Swami, Mother Yar, her son-in-law, Tirumal Rao, and his wife, Pushpa Kanti, Captain Thangavelu, Mother Yar, Excess Commissioner, Navanitam Naidu family, a nursery proprietor, Jayaram, his friends and relatives, attended Akhanda Bhajan. The devotees brought a lot of flowers and some florists of the K.R. market visited with flowers and fruits. Fruits received from the devotees were cut and distributed as prasadam. In 1944, Baba performed Aksharabhyasam, the first alphabet learning ceremony of my son Harnad at Narsimarao Naidu's house. On that occasion, he materialized for me a silver pendant with the image of Shirdi Sai Baba on one side and Hanuman on the other. As requested by the family, Baba visited Bangalore once every two months and stayed in Narsimara Naidu's house. Daily bhajans continued when he was at Bangalore. Excise Commissioner Navanitam Naidu's wife and children were very much devoted to Baba. But he did not like some of Baba's ways. On one occasion, they had arranged a bhajan in the house at Chamra's Bay, and while it was going on, Namunetam Naidu sat outside. Around nine at night, Baba went inside a room along with Naidu's family and locked the door. He opened the door around midnight and came out looking as though he had got up from a deep sleep. When people inquired the reason for his delay, Baba replied, I had been to the hospital at Bombay to perform an operation. Navanitam Naidu, who had a telephone in those days, immediately called up and found out that an operation had just then been performed at the same hospital and that the patient was then being shifted to the ward. From then onwards, Navanitam Naidu became a devotee. He even gave Baba his first pet dog, which was later always on Baba's lap. Baba treated both Narsim Rao Naidu and Jagannath Rao Naidu as his friends. Once, when Baba was returning to Puttaparthi, he asked both to accompany him. They came by train, the Guntakal passenger, and alighted at Penugunda. From there, they took a bus to Bukapatnam making the rest of the journey to Puttaparthi by foot. They stayed there for two days as guests of Subbamma in her house, where Baba was already staying. The next morning, Baba took them through the Chitravati River and dug a pit of one foot depth to show water flowing below the sand. In the evening, he took them to the neighboring fields near Janakampalli and Bukkapatnam. Baba was a friend and guide. In the evening, he took them to a devotee's sugar cane field where jaggery was being made. Each had a glass of sugar cane juice and also tasted the delicious jaggery. Next morning, two of them returned to Bangalore. As they had shown Baba the city of Bangalore, Baba also took the opportunity to show them around Puttaparthi. Karur is a town 475 kilometers from Puttaparthi in a Tamil-speaking province. Ramalakshmi from Karu suffered from an incurable allergic disease. One night, she had a strange dream in which a boy with a brilliant aura around his head appeared standing on the coils of a huge serpent. In the dream, he asked her to come to Puttaparthi. After persistent inquiry, she found out where Puttaparthi was and visited the place. She found Baba to be the same boy as in her dream. Baba welcomed her. Her incurable disease was soon cured. 
her brother Subramanian Chittiar from Madurai followed her to see Baba within a few months. He came with his wife and seventeen others. Baba was a young boy, but the Chittiar was convinced of his divinity almost instantaneously. Subramanian Chittiar later found Sri Paduka Trust, drawn by their own curiosity, florists and flower merchants. had found themselves in baba's presence after witnessing their client's contagious enthusiasm to see him narayana pa was one such flower merchant in the old flower market of bangalore he would recall later professor subarao did with his sister on patalamman temple street they visited me every day This is the description by Narayana Pa, as you must have noticed. They visited me every day for about ten days to buy garlands. They invited me to their place, saying, "A small boy from Puttaparthi has become a swami, and is staying in our house. Why don't you come and see him?" I was interested, grabbed a garland, and went with them in their car. Baba was staying in a small room. I garlanded him and prostrated. When I got up, he waved his hand, mitra vibhuti, and applied it to my forehead. That moment was like a magnet, pulling me towards him, creating a mysterious attraction. I attended bhajans regularly. After two days with my friends, both flower merchants, I went to have darshan. The bhajans interested me, and they attracted others. The crowd kept increasing in those days. Baba himself sang songs and took harati. Later, five of us visited Puttaparthi and stayed for two weeks. During this visit, there was only a hut with stone walls and a straw roof. There is nothing there, no food, snacks, or drinks. We cooked some rice in the open, brought curd from one of the houses, and thus had our breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Baba instructed us. Not to trust anybody there. He asked us not to exhibit money to anyone. One evening around 4 p.m., Baba took us to the Chitravati River. He played with the sand and took out a Mysore Pak, a sweet, and gave it to us. We said, "Swami, it tastes like Gundappa Hotel Mysore Pak at Bangalore." Baba said, "Yes, I brought it from there." We also put our hands in the sand and tried to do what he had done. Then we said to him, "What is it, Swami? We do not get anything. How do we get it?" You see that it is possible for him to do anything, and it is not for anybody. You see, on another day, he took us to the top of the hill, picked a mango from a tamarind tree, and gave it to us. We pulled all the branches and tried ourselves, but nothing of the nature came. One day we cooked rice and had it with green chilies. Another day we made tomato rasam, which Baba liked very much, and spoke about it afterwards.